On January 13, 2014, the Supreme Court will hear arguments in the National Labor Relations Board versus Noel Canning. This is a case that is, well, both, is both very technical but also very important when it comes to the interaction between the President and the Senate um, and who has the power when it comes to deciding who's going to be appointed to various different positions in the federal government. The Constitution provides that the President gets to appoint ambassadors, judges, and a variety of other officials, uh, many of whom are designated by Congress, with the advice and consent of the Senate. As you may know, the Senate has recently made it a little bit more difficult than it has historically been to give its advice and content, consent uh, because there have been a lot of procedural obstructions to, pr to uh, consideration of the President's appointees. Um, this has gotten the most press with respect to ju judicial appointees, but it has also happened with respect to executive appointees. And in the case of uh, Noel Canning, the one that's being argued in January, the question has to do with uh, presidential appointments to the National Labor Relations Board. The Constitution says uh, uh, that not only can the president make these appointments with the advice and consent of the Senate, but that should these uh, should that the president also has the power to fill up all vacancies that may happen during the recess of the Senate. So, what is at issue in this case is what does that mean? Does that mean that the president has the authority to fill anything that happens to be vacant, even if the vacancy was occurred before the Senate was in recess, or is the president limited only to uh, to appoint to replacing officials? Who's, uh, when the vacancies arose during the recess? That's one question. Another question is, what is a recess? I, in the Noel Canning case, it, the, the practice that's being challenged is that the president made his appointments to the National Labor Relations Board while the Senate was technically in session. They were meeting on a regular basis for uh, pro forma sessions, but they were conducting absolutely no business. And they made it very clear they were going to conduct absolutely no business. So the question there is whether or not these particular appointments took place during the type of recess that is recognized by, um, by the Constitution. The, the, d d uh, the D.C. Circuit that considered this case actually said that the recess, only recess during which the President could make such appointments, is the recess between Congresses, which happens every two years when the House of Representatives turns over uh, and when a third of the Senate uh, initiate, starts a new term. Uh, that period of time in between the Congresses can actually be extraordinarily short. Uh, the, the old Congress can finish its business and then almost immediately the new Congress can be sworn in. So uh, that was a particularly restrictive reading of the Appointments Clause. This is, as I said at the beginning, although technical, very important. Uh, the Republican members of the Senate have made it very difficult for the Senate to consider presidential appointments, primarily by the use of the filibuster. In response, the Democratic, uh, Democrats of the Senate have recently voted to change the rules of the Senate so that it is no longer possible to filibuster uh, a, a presidential nomination uh, of an official or of any judicial appointment below the Supreme Court. In some ways, that may make the Noel Canning case somewhat less significant, at least in today's world where the Senate is controlled by the same party as the White House. Um, but there are other ways that members of the minority party in the Senate can prevent uh, various different appointments from coming to the floor to be voted on. And of course, in the future, should at some point the Senate be controlled by a different party from the White House, the Senate could simply refuse to consider the presidential appointments at all. Uh, so the implications of this case are significant. Um, some people would argue that, in fact, it has to do with whether or not the government can function at all. Um, and uh, that we'll have to see how the Supreme Court uh, approaches the question.